Welcome to my series about all Chopin's music. Are you surprised? Are you shocked? I hope so, because that was my goal. We didn't start from Chopin's music. Of course, we started from music by Johann Sebastian Bach and his Two Voices Invention, number 14. Johann Sebastian Bach was Chopin's god. Chopin loved Bach's music. Chopin studied carefully all Bach music that he could find as a child, as a young pianist, and also as an adult and accomplished artist. Uh, we know that he was warming up before concerts, when well, he didn't play a lot of concerts, but when he played a concert, actually, he warmed up by playing through all or uh, many uh, preludes and fugues by Bach. But why uh, did I play for you this invention? Because today, we focus on Chopin's etude in C sharp minor, opus 10, number 4, which in fact is simply a two voices invention. W to prove uh, my words, of course, we will make analysis and I will show you. I think it's a great fun to do, so let's do it. First, we have to, of course, analyze a little bit this invention. Well, all the inventions we can do, but we don't have time for that. Maybe this will be another project of mine. Um, you can uh, tell me how do you like the idea of analyzing all Bach inventions. Um, Johann Sebastian Bach wrote these two voices inventions, 15 of them, and also late three voices later, for his son to improve his technique. And but later, um, after some time, he also like rewrote them again and put them together as a kind of exercises for young musicians who wants to play keyboard instruments. So these are purely etudes, my friends. These are etudes, but they don't have this title etude. They are called inventions. What is the idea of these inventions? Of course, two voices, we have here two voice inventions. So one hand has one voice, another hand has another voice. And the idea is that right hand presents the theme. Left hand presents the same theme. So it's like right hand played something which was quite difficult at that time to play. Then the left hand has to show that it also can play the same thing. And later they have the dialogue using the same material. This is incredible in this invention that Bach practically is using only one motif and he's constructing the whole piece using one or two motifs. This one and this one. And it is all, absolutely all. Just listen. Repeat it, but upside down. Again. 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 Yeah, this is the genius of Bach. And if we are going to make analysis of Bach music, trust me, it's going to be really, really fun and genius because all his music is like that. Incredible. But one or one motif and then, okay, later we, when the left hand is showing off the whole thing, then later they have the dialogue. So right hand is playing. And left hand. And right hand. And left hand. Right. Left. Right. 
left, right, left, right, and then together. Left, right, left, and they play together. Absolutely gorgeous, fascinating piece of music. Okay, we are finished with Bach, and now let's go to Etude in C sharp minor, opus 10, number 4. Invent two voices invention. Let's listen to this now, and maybe not the whole thing, but some a little bit, in a little slower tempo, so that we can follow which hand is showing off at what time. So, of course, right hand starts just like in Bach. Left hand. Le right hand. Maybe this is enough for now. We came to the point we can call it a middle middle part of the etude. Two voices invention. I hope you could follow me. Uh, trust me, it's not easy to play Chopin's etude and talk at the same time. Left, right, left, right. And it's not. It is really hard. Um, but anyway, I think if we do it even slower, that will even remind us the Bach, Bach music. Now let's try to focus and let's try to see that each hand, I mean left hand, is just copying what right hand played. Right, left. we have to make analysis so that it, we can see what's deeply inside because believe me it's really fantastic really fantastic okay but <clears throat> let's make it in order so I want to tell you that uh, now I'm playing all Chopin's etudes and, and I have to tell you that this opus 10 especially is constructed in a very intelligent way. Chopin is thinking about de development of the technique of young pianist. He is really thinking about it. We had etude number one, which developed the right hand uh, playing um, arpeggios, but without putting the thumb under as you remember, we don't have putting the thumb under because it's a very difficult thing. So Chopin avoid this in the first etude. Uh, but we improve right hand playing very fast, very loud. So, you know, good stamina, good technique, right hand is ready. Etude number two improves three weakest fingers of the right hand playing fast. Etude number two. Three improves three weakest fingers playing beautiful melody, singing, and also in the middle part stretching the hands, both hands. 
and now we have attitude number four and what this attitude improves well this attitude improves two hands equally we the pianist must have equal abilities in both hands this is not easy trust me because if you are a pianist yourself you know very well that if you are right-handed your right hand is much stronger than the left and usually when we practice scales when we practice exercises um, uh, usually we play hands together um, and when we do it unfortunately our weaker weaker hand does not really improve uh, because it's hidden we can't control it together because our brain can control at the same time only one hand usually the strongest one uh, so it's much better and much more useful to improve the technique each hand separately to prove it I just tell you one example when right hand alone can play very fast scales and arpeggios does it mean that left hand will automatically be able to play it as well not at all you have to teach left hand alone the same thing even if right hand already can play so that means that our two hands are completely different because we are using different parts of brains to control the hands and chopin knew it I don't know how he knew it but not not even Chopin Johann Sebastian Bach also knew it so what how smart he was by writing the same problems for two hands but they don't play together one hand is accompanying and another hand has to produce uh, herself let's say alone so I like to compare this attitude to the show uh, maybe in circus or in the theater or somewhere when we have two people two persons maybe dancers maybe you know some uh, in the circus when they are doing difficult things and the, the first is doing very difficult things jumping all over then standing doing like this and okay now left hand you show me can you do it and the left hand is doing the same also as good and say ha ha I can and what about you so then the right hand again is jumping doing doing and again standing oh show me now show me and they are just playing like this if you listen to this attitude like that it's so much fun so uh, Chopin wants the pianist to improve left hand as good as the right hand so they must be absolutely equal so if the right hand can play left hand must play the same exactly the same so you know that's it takes time uh, of course especially for the left hand now this is not the end let's analyze the first four bars of this etude and now this is a really amazing thing can you imagine that in these four bars so barely 10 seconds of music in every bar we have completely different technical problem for the hand seriously very different let's see the first bar we have like a short scales when we are using both white keys and black keys this is not easy this is not comfortable to play it's much more comfortable to play only white you can play really fast when you have like here we have black and white black and white it's a little bit not less comfortable because as you know black keys are a little bit higher than white so uh, this is for the hand not that comfortable and Chopin knew it of course so he did it on purpose not only to make it difficult but mostly to improve our playing and we should thank him because he improved the whole piano playing level in the world by writing these etudes so the first bar we have this little short scales the second bar suddenly changes completely 
how can we call it? I think we can call it little trills. When we have little trill and then one note in the higher register. This is a very different technique. Then what we have here, we have here the, the next bar, we have an exercise for the wrist. We need to have a very supple wrist to play. Can you see? The, the whole forearm actually must be very supple because it's very wide. And then bar number four, we have broken octaves. Chopin didn't use broken octaves in his music, except of this etude, and, but Franz Liszt used it a lot. Um, you know, he could compose the whole theme of... Uh, something like that we find in his ballad number two broken octaves. Chopin didn't, but here we have this bar when right hand has it. So, to make it short, very difficult. Every bar, every two seconds, we have to change the way how we play. Um, and a pianist must be aware of it, to choose the correct tool to solve the problem. So, and then the left hand has exactly the same problems. And now another fantastic thing. Do you remember how I told you about Bach and his invention? That Bach constructed the whole invention using only one motif or two motifs. Chopin is doing the same. He is using practically two or three motifs that he showed us at the beginning. Little scales, little trills and the wrist. Maybe some octaves too, but usually the wrist is here. So these three are here. So let's listen again in a, a little slower tempo and observe these differences of the difficulties. So first, the scales. The trills. Again, they are here. The trills. The wrist. Octaves. And left hand the same, scale. The wrist. Again. And here the left hand had octaves. Not broken octaves, but octaves still. Okay, so this is the idea uh, of this, um, this etude. The idea of, as I say, the hand, both hands are showing off the technique uh, separately and are talking to each other. But well, rather, as I said before, like, come on, let's show me if you can. And now, as I said before, I want to prove you that the whole etude is constructed from these motifs. So now we will focus, I play it again, and we will focus on where we have which motifs. We start from the beginning. Now left hand is playing only the first motif of the little scales. have uh, right hand and then immediately left hand will come and they will be using only two first motifs so little scale and then little trills but what is so funny in this moment very very funny moment is that right hand will play and it is like the beginning of the piece so uh, we should have four bars right little scale, little trill, wrist and octaves. But when after trills, suddenly left hand will come and will push the right hand, like, come on, let me do it, and starts to show off the same thing, that I can do it again. Then right hand is, you know, will, will stand up 
and will push the left hand again. And this pushing is like screaming. There will be a one, one big loud note screaming ah, and pushing. And then I show you how I can. And then another hand will push the another hand. And they are just playing like that. This is one of the most funny moments in this etude. Let's listen to it a little slower. Uh, right hand starts. Left hand. Right. Left. And we come to the next part of the etude. Did could you hear it? Let's do it again. Right hand is showing off. Right, left hand is pushing her and saying, now me! Right hand, now me! Left hand, now me! Okay, and now we have right hand using only the first motif by um, creating the climax. This is it. together two hands using the first motif. And now we come to the middle part where we, for the first time, we will have some kind of melody. The right hand will sing a little, a little melody. Left hand at the same time will accompany by the first motif repeated. And then two hands together, together, just like in Bach, will play the motif of the trills. Exactly, literally, the motif of the trills. This. So let's listen to this. It, have, it, it repeats twice. First time. Second time. And what will happen now? Now both hands are playing together, just like in Bach's invention. Uh, and they will use a motif of the trill and a little scale, but mo mostly motif of the trill, and will produce the biggest climax, well, except of the ending but the biggest climax in the middle of the piece, when suddenly right hand will be left completely alone and will seem to be lost. Let's listen. Trills. 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 Okay, again. After this, we have right hand alone. We don't know when it will end, and then suddenly left hand comes and say, come on, let's go again. Let's go all over again from the beginning. That's how fantastic this moment, this moment is great. The, just before the recapitulation. Let's listen again. Left, right hand alone. Chopin writes forte fortissimo possibile and then he writes con più fuoco possibile. This is probably one or two times in his life he wrote something like that. Simply it means play as loud as you can and as con fuoco means with fire as you can. Of course because we have the virtuoso coda. Coda which is 
constructed by the motif of and now you tell me I'm sure you can all of you <laughs> Do you remember the trill motif? Here, at the beginning of the piece, the same motif. So, and this coda is also funny. At first, right hand will uh, triumphal, will, will have a triumphal moment. I'm the best and I can play better and I will finish this etude by myself. Listen. <laughs> suddenly left hand comes and rise and plays the same thing the same thing with the trill together so they end together and at the end Chopin is very wicked very evil he ends another way kind of technique very uncomfortable uh, arpeggio up and down with a little um, we call it um, a repetition uh, means the same playing the same note twice so that's another if the pianist is practicing everything and practice everything and then comes to the end and then suddenly is oh my god I have to improve another way of technique at the very end so this is the, the end that's how it ends let's play let's listen to the whole coda again or maybe just maybe let's listen to the recapitulation again because it's i think it's uh, fun <laughs> this fantastic effective etude which is like an explosion of pianistic technique but also a lot of fun so that's it uh, I hope now it's uh, it will be more fun for you to listen to this fantastic piece there are quite many fantastic recordings uh, of many great pianists playing this etude so I will not now present here uh, another one uh, but uh, for sure one day I will record all the etudes on the CD so then I will share it with the world and all of you thank you very much for watching and see you tomorrow we will have the black keys etude sounds scary see you